Welcome, it's about 18 after the hour of six. And for those in Barbados, today is the day. The polls are open, elections in beautiful Barbados. And by all means, we want to get the full breakdown as to the campaign and some of all the happenings there on the ground. We welcome Devaron Bruce, political analyst, joining us from Barbados. Devaron, good morning to you, welcome. Good morning, Jason, and good morning to your viewers. Indeed. Thank well, you for having me. Of course, and, and we're very happy to, to have you on because this is a most important conversation. Pools are open. It's Wednesday. Mia Motley, the incumbent, uh, she's very popular outside, well, I would say around the region. Um, I'm obviously outside of Barbados. Does this popularity also transfer within the, within the square miles of, of, of Barbados? Yes, certainly. Yeah. As you said, she's quite popular outside of the island and with it as well, too. Although there has certainly been some happenings within Barbados that obviously naturally affect her popularity. The COVID pandemic obviously has had an impact on the economy, and you're coming out of an economy that was quite unhealthy due to the last administration as well, too. So certainly the popularity is waning. We've had, for instance, concerns regarding lockdowns and curfews and just some of the economic woes that begin or continue to haunt her that has hit her on her popularity. But we can't deny the fact that she's an extremely popular prime minister within our Barbadian context, despite the challenges that she's had thus far. Well, Devron, I know this is a snap election. She more or less pulled this one out of the bag way early, earlier than expected. Does this speak of rumblings within her own party that she decided to go forward with this election way before time? Well, there are some, I would say, uh, discussions regarding the rumblings within her own party. And I think the timing of the election points to that. Because usually a political party or a prime minister rather will call an election when there is some level of political, I would say, difficulties or challenges. But you have a Democrat level party, which is the second largest party in the island, which has not really presented much political um, challenges for her. So the question becomes, where are the political challenges coming from? And some persons have devised that those were coming from the, the, within her party as opposed to anything external. And it would not be totally surprising because as opposition leader in 2010, she had some troubles within her own party. As you may know, she was removed as opposition leader in 2010. Yeah. And many of the individuals that removed her are still there right now. So you definitely can see why persons will put together some of that argument coming to the fact that the elections have been called so early. I know the last election, of course, it was a clean sweep. It was, as we say in Trinidad and Tobago, a softening. Uh, she, she took the opposition, at, well, she, at least she took the, her political rivals to the cleaners. Um, it was a full clean sweep. Do you suspect something similar, or is this a closer race uh, when we look at the breakdown and the campaigning that led up to today? Well, generally, in Barbados, elections tend to be far more competitive than we've had in 2018. The worst the opposition has performed historically was, I believe, about two seats. But in 2018, they lost all of them. And we certainly could anticipate that this election will be far more competitive in 2018. Um, interesting enough, a lot of Dems, interestingly, supported Mayor Motley in 2018, but I think this time around, that situation will not reoccur. And the economic conditions in the island are such where persons certainly are hurting. The unemployment levels are high, inflation is high, and the economy is, is not growing to the extent that it should. So the opposition has also been able to galvanize some new candidates because certainly they lost quite a bit of support due to the last administration you now they have a whole slew of new candidates new leadership and they've been making an argument that they need to be returned to office so i don't predict another trade level at all actually okay what's the voter turnout like in barbados generally um do people come out well, in the 2018 election, the voter turnout was 60%, which was down from 2% or 62% rather in 2013. So we've been hovering around between 60 and 65% over the last five elections or so. I understand there are thousands who are excluded because of COVID-19. They're in quarantine. Uh, what's the latest with that situation? Well, interestingly enough, there was an injunction that was filed in the High Court yesterday to stop the election because of that, because the argument is, is that the representation of people's art in Morbidus grants individuals the right to vote. But at the same time, the quarantine, or rather the isolation laws, in essence, 
restrict them from moving. So currently we have about 5,500 persons in isolation who would not be able to vote. Some of them are under the age of 18, but certainly let's say about 5,000 people. In the Trinidadian context, it may not sound like a lot, but in the Barbadian context, we've had seats that have been won by 10 votes. We've had seats that have been won by 100 votes. So we can see what a 5,000 can do in an election. And certainly, it, it, many have argued that this is a level of disenfranchisement that we've never seen before. And as I said, there's been a high court um, challenge, which has been dismissed, by the way, uh, because in essence, the court does not have the, the right to stop an election. So. The current circumstance is that on today, January 19th, about 5,000 Barbadians who are eligible to vote will not be able to due to COVID restrictions. You think this might work in the favor of the incumbent or the opposition? Well, it's hard to say. Uh, we, we, could, we could assume that it would affect both of them. And um, currently, I would say that the Barbados Labour Party has a larger support base than the Democratic Labour Party. So we could assume that in missing some of that support base, it would hurt them as much as the Democratic Labour Party. So if I had to make a call, I would say it actually hurts the opposition as opposed to the current government. How many parties are contesting the elections today? Well, quite a few. I, I can't even give you a number. I know that um, the parliament is 60 individuals, but we have 132 candidates contesting the election. One of the interesting things that arose from 2018, and I am surprised it's still here, is the emergence of these alternative parties or smaller parties. So we have um, the APP, which actually just formed out of the UPP and the PDP, and there's some other small parties as well as independent candidates. So there are quite a few now, and that's really a real development in Barbadian political context because we've not seen this type of, of political parties and smaller parties emerging before. So it's a very, a very interesting and new dynamic in our politics. Interesting, interesting. Any marginals there? I mean, obviously, as we mentioned earlier, Mia Motley in 2018, it was a clean sweep. But when we look at the context now, a closer race, a tighter race, are there any swing seats that might bring this home for, I guess, any one of every, any, any political party on the divide? Well, I don't think anybody believes that the Myanmar administration will end today. It's very, very, very likely that they will be re-elected today. But certainly, as you know, there are some strongholds that political parties tend to have, and we would suspect that the opposition will be able to recapture some of these strongholds. So the St. Phillips, the, some of the Christchurch seats, and one or two others, they're expecting to return those. But nobody believes that the opposition is going to win the election today. Um, as you mentioned, there are definitely some swing seats that may favor the opposition, but it's very difficult to tell, again, given the COVID context and really the, the loss of support that they've had over the last couple of years. You know, before I, before I bring it back to that COVID uh, situation with the protocols, I want to find out, because I've been hearing rumblings out of Barbados concerning your Republican status. Obviously, we know of the amazing ceremony last year. You basically cut that umbilical cord to England. It's now a republic, and you would have celebrated your heroes. I heard that there were some people on the ground in Barbados who were not in tune with that particular move, and that was all on Mia Motley. Is that the case? Well, the argument was is that persons wanted greater involvement, greater public education, and just a greater say in the move to re the Republic. It's fine to, move, to go to a Republic, but what type of Republic, for instance, do you want to have? Do you want to have a ceremonial president? Do you want to have um, a more executive president? And what are some of the constitutional changes that are required and that people want to see now that they're a republic? So, um, in essence, in, in fairness to the government, they are currently undergoing, I, I would say, a, a charter for Barbados, a constitutional charter for Barbados. And they said over the next 18 months, there will be constitutional discussions that persons can really get involved in what the Barbadian constitution and the Barbadian politics should look like going forward. But at the time, there was really a rush or many have argued a rush decision and there was not a lot of input into the move to republic. So that was some of the concerns at the time. Thanks a lot for that clarification, Devaron. What are the protocols in place for today? Uh, what, what do the voters need to do when they pull up to the polling stations? Well, fundamentally, it would not be much different from what you have now. So social distancing, 
when it gets to the polls, you will not be able to hand the polling agents your ID card. You will show both sides of your ID card on your own. There will be sanitization stations, uh, the pencils being used, and those various things will be sanitized. So the usual protocol, social distance and sanitizing, and in essence, just a greater control over the process. So I don't think it's going to be anything unusual for what persons have experienced this for the pandemic, certainly different from every other election. But I think Barbadians have become accustomed to the, the protocols regarding the COVID circumstance at this point. Devron, what's the tone and tenor of the elections, the campaigning? I mean, sometimes in, here in Trinidad and Tobago, I could tell you it gets very, very bitter to the point where it's, it's sad, it's unfortunate, the utterances by some of our public figures who go on a, on a, on a campaign trail and stand up to, to do their address. What's the tone and tenor like in Barbados when it comes to elections? Interestingly enough, this election I found had, I would say, probably was the cleanest I've seen thus far. And I really suspect the fact that it has not been brought online as opposed to the usual mobilization. So you know when you have that large crowd ahead of you and the energy that follows you, politicians can begin to behave in ways that become unfortunate. But I think they understand that they're living in a digital age and that cameras are on them and social media are on them and it's very difficult to, in essence, say things and it's not caught. So I actually found this campaign minus one or two inc incidences um, to be quite clean, and I think that's one of the positives coming out of this social media light campaign. But certainly, previously, we've seen several, several instances of what we just discussed where politicians, in essence, head down a very unfortunate road. But this time around, and given the shortness of the campaign as well, too, because if we think of it, the campaign was announced in, I think, the 27th of December. So we've had about three weeks of campaigning as opposed to six or eight weeks in some instances. So I think the shortness of the campaign and the tightness of the campaign and just having the COVID restrictions where campaigns have to be finishing at a certain time, because Barbados is still under curfew, by the way. Uh, so th those limitations regarding curfew, the social media aspect, the lack of energy in many instances i think has already produced a clear campaign than before wow a three-week campaign almost like a snatch and grab you know almost like a snatch and grab devron i want to thank you for coming on this morning you know i think uh, we 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 got from you a really amazing perspective we understand what's happening on the ground the clarity is there but before we go you suspect that the incumbent will be again moving forward with her administration from tonight you think the results leading towards miss motley Yes, most definitely. Most things favor Mayor Motley at this time, and it would really be an unusual and surprising upset had the opposition won the seats, uh, enough seats rather to form government. They would need 16 seats to win government right now, and that's very, very, very difficult to do. Devron, I want to thank you for coming on this morning. All the best, and let's see how things pan out there in Barbados. Thank you so much, Jason. And thank you again for having me. You're most welcome. Yeah, so. News out of Barbados. Polls, you know, open today, elections today. Speaking about elections, of course, the DB South by elections, it's around the corner. And when we come back, we touch base with the UNC candidate, Kamraj C. Charan. Stick around.